We are uh, behind the scenes here in the uh, programming orifices of Clear Channel Communications uh, with the one and only, the legendary one, Tony Tilford, taking a time out from his uh, busy midday shift. Yeehaw. And, uh, and just, uh, Zeppo, where are you going? I didn't know it was needed. Oh, well, you're not, you haven't been excused. You're an intern, young man. You need to learn your spot. Yeah, that's a good I internship am. if you can get it. What's your handicap now that you started three weeks into your internship? You shooting a little better game these days? Shooting much better, yeah. Skin down, hold the table. You know, uh, Tony Tilford went to college with your dad. I did he. The one and only Larry stories about the turtle. Oh uh, well, you know, I, mean, I I remember he'd be up early on Sunday mornings getting ready for church. And uh, in church he, day in his life. he would. Uh, he drove the bus actually. He'd, he'd drive around and get all the little old ladies that, that couldn't make it to uh. church on their own. He'd pick them up and he'd stop by, you know, the Denny's or whatever we had in Moorhead in the way of breakfast. That fare. was a Druthers, wasn't it? At the time, though, we had a Druthers. Yeah, we had a Druthers. <laughs> and I think uh, Burger Chef was still in existence and they had a mean breakfast biscuit. So he'd get old Mrs. Wilson and the other old ladies uh, their breakfast biscuit. And, uh. and uh, you know, he'd take them down to church, and then he'd uh, make sure that they uh, got in their seats in the pew, and then he'd go put on his robe and go to the choir, because he was the lead baritone. Right. And then uh, afterwards, he'd give, give them all a ride back home, and then, uh, you know, spend the rest of his day volunteering in the community. That's, that's what, uh, Your dad was a heck of a guy, is what he's saying, Dominic. Yeah. Sounds like a true man of God. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, humanitarian. Jimmy Carter's got nothing on this guy as far as the humanitarian <laughs> aspect of your life is concerned. Jimmy Carter was quite the peanut farmer. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah, Dick Whiskey's a nut farmer. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> Just loves the nuts. How's, that, how's this year's harvest? Speaking of loving nuts, where's Kenny? I haven't seen him. Oh, before. yeah, yeah, the abominable. Say hello to him today. The abominable Kenny Douglas. Would you go back and get him, Zeppo? We're uh, rocking out to Queen What's in the office right now. Uh. Kenny. Kenny's the uh, big boy. Well, I'll go back there and surprise him. Back in the imaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? We'll go back and surprise him. Go back to your pool game. Right. I'm kidding. No, you can, you can stick around. No, it's all right. And uh, you should uh, you should ask your dad to, uh, you know. You're off to Auburn, I understand this, Bob? Yeah, so he can probably supply you with the, the proper scriptures to guide you through, you know, the early years of your collegiate life. Yeah. What could other be? Uh, what, what could very well otherwise be uh, a very, you know, turbulent time for a young man? It can be confusing. It can be very confusing that time in your life. College, yeah. Yeah. women. You have girls that want to, you know. It's like pretty girls take off their too. clothes. Yeah, any southeastern school really. That's that's the conference to be in as far as women are concerned. There's this thing called girls going wild. If you hear that brought up at any point while you're out, what? while you're out testifying with people. Yeah, yeah right, absolutely. Right, just just leave. The best thing to do when you get into a new neighborhood, particularly down there in Alabama, is get yourself a bicycle and a white shirt and a black tie. And just ride around in the neighborhoods, yep. going door to door. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you know, a little backpack. <laughs> a good backpack. Full of Magazine, new Some Watchtower magazines. Uh, they don't have to be Watchtower. They can be like you know, just the free ones you get to telling you what bands the bars or the bars or bands are playing in that weekend. And just go <laughs> hand those out to, through neighborhoods. They love that in the South. Speaking of bars, I like uh, too. I'm sure they with <laughs> Speaking of bars and the weekend, uh, hey, Zeppo, you can learn a lot from uh, Dick Whiskey here. Like Dick Whiskey had a pretty eventful week <laughs> uh, down in Nashville at a bachelor party. Yep. How did you get kicked out? I got kicked out of a karaoke bar, but that's about a normal Saturday night for me. Right. Which ended with Spin the Bottle with girls in their 30s. Did you? When was the last time you played Spin the Bottle, Dead Air Dennis? Uh, it's been a few hours. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> But it's Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still time. You, uh, you're not in your thirties, so what's it like being with an older woman? You like that, right? Oh yeah. Experience. Mm -hmm. She had a she had a spin the bottle experience. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in their thirties. We're the old guys. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, yeah. Tilford and I would like we'd we'd My kill wife's it. Still in her thirties. We'd kill each other to get to a, a thirty year old. You don't plug in. He's going remote. Did you gene jam this weekend with anybody? I did not gene jam. Tell Maybe us about the jamming. tell us about the girls from Birmingham though. Is that the the spin the bottle girls? Oh yeah. What were their names? Uh huh. See Dominic. Something. Yeah. Always forget. Always play down. See there. Well, no, no, no. no. The, the point is, here's here's another lesson to be learned. 
you know, these young men today, they'll go out in the bars, drink themselves senseless, hook up with girls, play atrocious, play atrocious games like spin the bottle, and then not even remember their names. I can only if only they would have put out a little bit more, I may remember their names. Put out a little, <laughs> put out a little bit more what effort? Yeah. <laughs> That's when you want to forget their name. <laughs> In the court of law, later on, when you're testifying at the paternity trial, you know, I don't remember. <laughs> we do have experience at that. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I've been in quite the dilemma. I can either go for girls that are older with more experience or go for girls born in 1990 that have absolutely no respect for themselves. That didn't grow up with Appetite for Destruction? Yeah. I don't trust a woman who didn't grow up with Guns N' Roses' first album. No, you know, when you when you think the guitarist for Guns N' Roses is Buckethead, you've got real <laughs> void, a real void in your life. <laughs> a, lot of these, a lot of these kids nowadays think that Chinese democracy is Guns N' Roses. Yeah. That is terrible. That, that album took longer to make than most girls are uh, uh, been out of puberty. That was almost as bad as Bon Jovi. <sighs> no, nothing is that bad. Uh oh. Where's Mike Doyle? Let's get Mike Doyle yeah, talking about. He loves the Bon Jovi. Guys. Talk about some Bon Jovi for us. That was like 24 out. years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> People still talk about it. It must have been a good one. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tilford, I don't, I don't know if you know this Dick Whiskey, but Tilford this was. No. Oh. You were the guy who exacted the Bon Jovi uh, band. Band. And that was 87. How old were you in 1987? Uh, four. Four. So. You might heard those guys the first time and like this is going to be the next big thing. Their the first time wasn't bad, Runaway and oh, stuff. Yeah. But mm -hmm. by the time they, you know, no, they got a little too poppy, too ballady, too wimpy, too hairspray. They started hanging out with chicks too much, right? Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, yeah. it's just the whole, uh, you know, pop rock for the sake of getting laid. There's there's a certain amount of uh, fun in that. So what you're you saying know? is they weren't Dan Dockin? Don. Well, Don Dockin. Yeah. I was in 482, so. Some Dockin' guy. Or they weren't Dan Dockin' either. <laughs> His much underrated brother, who's a karaoke DJ in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to the karaoke in Nashville. You got your mic turned off because you were singing I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. Yeah, I was singing it really well. And you were not singing it very well because I heard you sing karaoke. Okay. And, uh, and it wasn't Jim Morrison. And like, and not, not even halfway through the song, not even halfway through the song, you point at a woman who is slow dancing with a man, mm -hmm. and you tell her that. I just said one of your female body parts doesn't stand a chance tonight. You said, and I, I'll say it. You said your vagina doesn't stand a chance. I'm just looking out for her. Right. <laughs> and then, the, and then the microphone was cut. Mm -hmm. You have to envision in your head the type of woman that lives in Tennessee <laughs> that would slow dance at a karaoke bar. <laughs> I mean, she's only killing time till she works the overnights at the Waffle House. Waffle so. House. <laughs> yeah, we went to the Waffle House afterwards last night. We went out to the Malibu Pub last night too. Oh, that's a good way to spend a Sunday evening. <laughs> Unlike Zeppo's dad, who was ferrying the right, right, right. church women home after the right. Sunday evening services. An evening of fellowship with uh, old lady. Well, there was, I think there was an ice cream social. <laughs> Tastes great <glasses>. So <laughs> You sure he didn't like take him home at the end of the bus ride there and you know shake him down for some extra change or anything? No, 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 no. He, he might have sold him some oxycotton. <laughs> 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 That is funny. Now, did you guys, did you uh, and his dad were, and, and, and... We were in the first time I was ever on a radio station. Yeah? Ever. Six o'clock on a Saturday morning. This is at Moorhead. This is at Moorhead. WMKY is a public station over there. It's six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. 1982, maybe? Yeah. 1982? And the I was the sports reporter coming on to do the Saturday morning sports report. The <laughs> DJ playing country music that introduced me to do the sports report was Zeppo's dad. <laughs> Your dad was playing country music? It, well, that's what we played on <laughs> Sunday morning. Oh, okay. And, and then, uh, yeah, so the first time I was ever on the radio, his dad introduced me. Mm, wow. On the radio. That's cool. Yeah. So that was almost 30 years ago now. Wow. Jeez. Whew. So yeah, and then we he lived across the hall from me for a while. We went to we came to the Who in '82. Yeah, they were up arena on their farewell tour. Right. We uh, I rode with him from Moorhead. Really. So I'd come down with some guys that were friends. Of, well, he was a friend of mine, but some guys that I hung out with on a regular basis. We drove up here to buy tickets to go see Rush. So we were in the ticket window at Rupp, the old one, before they remodeled the Lexington. Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we're standing in line, and I'm a college sophomore, I guess, and I got, I don't know, 20 bucks in my pocket, maybe. <laughs> 30, maybe. And, uh, right. and we, we go to the window, and we're waiting to buy rush tickets, and the guy in front of me, I look, and I see him get his tickets, and he pays his money, and the ticket says, The Who? Well, you got to remember, this is Moorhead. You know, we had to wait for the telegraph to type in. And, so we didn't even know the Who was coming to Rupp Arena. And I tapped the guy and said, is that a ticket to see the Who? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, you're coming here? So I quickly looked through how much money I had. I had just enough money to uh, buy a ticket for Rush and, and the Who. But then I couldn't eat for a week. But, you know. Thir but 30 bucks covered that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Can yeah. you I imagine? Was 21, I think. I think it was... <laughs> I think the Who ticket was twelve bucks and the Rush ticket was ten. Oh my god! So maybe God. it was twenty-two. Maybe yeah. one of them was eight bucks. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. That didn't even cover your service charge. No, anymore no. At freaking Ticketmaster. Get you a couple of beers at your service charge and and maybe a place to park. Yeah. Oh yeah. If, maybe. You know, or you know, if you can get Radar to come pick you up, you can ride for free. <laughs> you don't need to park. Radar was Radar doing it back then? Was he driving people? No, around? he was. Uh, no, he was going to school then. Okay. He was, uh, okay. He, uh, well, Radar is still going to school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every day with all the pretty ladies down on campus. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. He, uh, no, he was, uh, he was still an undergrad at UK back then. Uh, wow. All right, behind the scenes with Tony Tilford, talking about his dad. And your dad is still, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's an advertising agency Media now. He's a mogul. Yeah. Media. And he's the pitcher on the Double Q softball team. Come which every once in a It's like Jorge Posada. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jorge, man. Yeah, right. All right, guys. It's good times.